What's going on guys? For today's MOOC review, we're taking a look at a Hobby Japan issue of Extra. So Extra is, as the name would imply, an extra publication that Hobby Japan puts out aside from their monthly publications. These come out, it's either um, twice a year or quarterly, I'm not sure. Anyway, not uh, every month anyway and there's usually a particular theme to them. The nice thing about these is that um, they're a little bit thinner. They don't, they're not like quite as thick as like your standard like monthly hobby magazine, uh, but they don't have like all the advertisements and stuff in them. Of course, everything like featured in here is all gonna be an advertisement in some sense, but it doesn't have like the sections of, and like your monthly magazines that has all the just advertisements for all the new stuff that's coming out. It's just all related to the theme, which in this case, the theme of this one is uh, Plamo for beginners. So not only Gunpla, even though Gunpla is featured on the front and on the back there as well. Uh, but it's not going to be only for Gunpla, but just generally Plamo tips and tools and advice and just demonstrations uh, of some different techniques and things like that here for beginners. So very cool. Let's go ahead and check it out for today's video. Okay, so starting off right here on the cover, you can see this is from 2023, volume 29, and you got the beginner symbol right there. Again, in Japan, this is used as like a beginner's symbol, so you can easily recognize that. The list price, the MSRP over here for this one is 1,540 yen, or that'd be 1,400 yen before tax, so about $12, something like that. Certainly not too bad. Like I said, this is a little bit thinner. It does go to um, just under 100 pages, looks like, almost to 100 pages. Here on the back, you can see an advertisement, looks like for some of Mr. Hobby's aqueous paints here, the uh, acrylic paint series line there from Mr. Hobby. So like I said, there's gonna be a lot of product placement in here. Uh, but mixed in with all of the nice juicy Gumpla content. So this is another book which I will be taking a look at. I've got it around here somewhere, I think right over here. At least I don't think that we've taken a look at that one yet. It's the beginner <laughs> Gumpla Beginner's Guide for specifically like the HG Witch for Mercury, the Witch for Mercury series. Have we taken a look at that one yet? I think actually maybe we did. I, I don't even remember at this point. But if not, then we will. If we have, then you can find it in my book reviews playlist here on YouTube. But all right, we got our contents right over here. We can get right into it. This is gonna go like a Japanese style backwards for us Westerners starting off here with some of Witch for Mercury here, but this is in this case the Full Mechanics 100 scale kit. This is just gonna be kind of a bit about the model kit here. I think these are all like just production images here and we're not really gonna see too much, I think, in a way of customization on this, at least at this point, because it's getting right into the main topic here. So we got that little bit of just kind of advertisement promotion for the new Full Mechanics Witch for Mercury Aerial Gundam there, but then we get a book for plastic model beginners here. A nice introduction with some very nice photography here in this page. We've got the HG Zaku 2 there and the entry grade Gundam. And it looks like we're starting off with kind of the most basic of basic, just kind of introducing uh, the naming for some of the parts. Like for example here, A is the runner, B is the parts, C is the gate, D is the runner marking. So yeah, just kind of very, very basic. And here we can get Welcome to the Plamo shop here, Plamo del shop, about different types of plastic models. You can see there's a store display here at this one. This I'm not sure which store this is, and they're probably not going to say. I can't quite tell. It looks like it's probably maybe Yellow Submarine, uh, but we got all sorts of military model kits there, traditional model kits. It looks like kind of like, yes, you may be familiar with plastic model tanks and aircraft, but we also have this from Bandai, the entry grade RX-782, the peak of plastic model development, at least sort of kind of at this point anyway. It's a great model kit, uh, very nicely developed model kit there. Of course, the entry grade line from Bandai, so a little bit just kind of about the basics of the entry grade line. Again, it's all in Japanese, so I'm just kind of having to infer this without going in and like uh, translating all these little bits. I'm sure there's a lot of really cool just like kind of information here just about like kind of the entry grade model kit. This is just kind of talking about some of the finer points about it, about like some of the color separation, uh, how the parts just easily snap together and all that kind of good stuff. So sure it's all basically kind of pretty simple, easily understandable information, especially like for anybody who's built at least a couple of kits, this seems like very, very, very beginner. And I think it even said like on the title, if I was uh, understanding this correctly, that it's like a, this is like a book to give to someone uh, who's a beginner. So like say, for example, you're into Gundam modeling or whatever, and you want your to introduce your friend to it, 
or something. This is the kind of book that you could pick up and give to your friend and basically starts off from like knowing zero about what plastic model hobby kind of entails and kind of gives you all the basics. So like tool shopping here, there's all kinds of nippers that they're gonna recommend from Tamiya and let's see, God Hand of course, got uh, some Hasegawa nippers. Minishima, I think these are here. So, of course, all these different tool brands make all these different types of nippers. Interesting they didn't include the USA Gundam Store nippers in here. That's a real shame. But uh, those are also nice, those of you guys who are located in the United States. Uh, but then we've got other tools like sanding sticks, tweezers, cutting mat, glue. I've always found cutting mat to be an interesting thing that, you know, everybody just kind of thinks that you need and you know everybody's got them cutting mats everywhere it's just something that we associate with the hobby when most of the time you really don't need a cutting mat for a lot of hobbying it's really just sort of like a protective layer for your desk and I think most people model in an area where they probably don't even really care that much about the desk that they're modeling on it's probably just a model that they've already deemed to be like their model desk and if they were to spill a little bit of paint or something on it don't think that they would really mind the cutting mat is kind of meant for like cutting right and how often are we actually like cutting a surface into the mat i don't know anyway you guys ever thought about that why do we all insist on using cutting mats i don't know anyway all right plastic model and cutting the most important step to begin the process of any plastic model is of course gluing cutting picking the kind of basic steps of cutting out the parts the kind of basic steps of removing parts from the runner and then putting them together. Of course, uh, a lot of plastic model kits, at least uh, the Bandai ones, you can just uh, snap together and you don't need any glue at all, uh, at least for all like modern Gumpla and things like that. But there's a lot of other kits like these are Artpla kits. That's a Wave Plesiosaur kit there, for example. I think that's a Tamiya, I believe, dinosaur model kit. So just kind of talking about these are some of the model kits. These are mostly like 135th scale uh, stuff right here that does need to be glued. These are the kind of things that you would have to glue. Obviously, uh, military model kits, these uh, just military figure model kits from Tamiya, you would also need to glue aircraft models, of course. So really great photography, I will say. I mean, like, this is a little too beginner. Like, for me, I've, I don't, I'm no expert, but I'm, I feel a little bit more advanced than at least than what's covered in this book. Though I can say, I just really, I mean, it's a very nicely presented book. I mean, even if you're not a beginner beginner, uh, it's still a pretty, just nice looking book. Japanese, I will say, uh, you know, publishers and, you know, uh, they know, they really know how to put a nice looking book together, I will say. So here's another model kit here. This is, I believe, from uh, Tamiya as well, I want to say. It's either Tamiya or Hasegawa, but this little like uh, Honda scooter there. Very cool. I actually have not this same model, but uh, another version of this model that I actually have. I do plan on building sometime. I only have a, a very, like, three non-sci-fi model kits, and that's one of them. So there's that, and I have, like, two tank model kits. So someday I'll get to those. We, uh, I do also have this issue. So you can see, I'm not sure if you guys have noticed in here, there's other advertisements for other books. So, like, if you're into dinosaur modeling, I just kind of talked past this section, but if you're into dinosaur modeling, there's this dinosaur modeling book also available. If you're into motorcycle modeling, there's this motorcycle modeling book also available. So there's uh, advertisements for other books in here. So this is just kind of a general introduction to all different types of plastic modeling. And so this issue of Extra, I do have that one, and I will be taking a look at that in the future. I've got that over here in the queue. This is a issue of Extra, which is kind of all about like small scale uh, figure modeling, non-military figure modeling like this. So this is a set uh, from Tamiya as well, if I remember correctly, the back to school set. So here we got, it looks like, an introduction to a bunch of different more types of model kits of other different kind of things like uh, Moderoid Align, you've got uh, Macross, you've got your different kits from Kotobukiya. It looks like this is actually a different um, ho hobby companies here, for example. So Tamiya, Kotobukiya, Bandai Spirits, uh, Aoshima, Max Factory, and Good Smile Company, and uh, Hasegawa, Fushimi over here. So kind of the big model kit companies, which you're going to see most regularly. So, and then into painting. So of course we've got different types of painting. Hand painting is obviously one option that's available. And then you've got spray can painting. So this is just going to be kind of, again, just a basic introduction. Here are some different types of different ways you can go about doing your painting. 
this spray can painted car model, complete with plenty of rough looking mold lines on there. And then of course, uh, looks like this is also just doing some hand painting, not like a hand painting, but just like weathering. So just like weathering directly on the plastic so that you can get the appearance of like a painted kit without actually fully painting. You just do your, do your weathering directly on the plastic. So we got a little bit about that. Looks like a couple of different techniques featured here on this Zaku. So it looks like maybe they uh, spray can painted this one and then uh, applying some of these more just kind of weathering techniques onto the Zaku just to demonstrate that. And then we're getting into, it looks like different, oh yeah, this is kind of about using different types of paint. So whether you're using acrylic, enamel, or lacquer paints, just kind of um, how those work together is a little bit kind of in, uh, explanation about that. It looks like in different types of paints and products over here. Interesting section here up next, just kind of about uh, your modeling space, it looks like for this one, which we've taken a look at in a couple of uh, books recently. The Modelers, what was it called? Modelers uh, Modeling Room something anyway. Uh, we're taking, we've taken a look at a couple of those books, just kind of about the workspace generally. And then we've got some painting here with aqueous paints. So we saw this actual particular model featured on the back side of the MOOC right there. And so this is one that looks like it was primed with probably just like a spray can primer. And then it's going to be painted here with some aqueous paints and painted in a very Max Watanabe sort of style, it looks like the way that the paint is kind of applied, kind of uh, stippled on there and you just kind of build up your layers and it gets kind of this natural, like slightly weathered look to it just through the painting process. This is kind of how uh, a lot of painting is done normally with uh, when you're hand painting with lacquer paints, but you can paint in the same way with uh, acrylic paints as well, obviously. Uh, it's just that acrylic paints are much more forgiving. because obviously they're water soluble, easier to just kind of redo if you mess up or you're not happy with the results, but the kit looks great. I mean, it looks really good uh, there just for some very basic techniques applied to it and it just kind of goes to show. But I mean, like the thing with books like this, and I think I've talked about this before, is that they show you very basic techniques, but these are very basic techniques that have been done dozens, if not, you know, dozens and dozens of times by like professional modelers. So, I mean, just because it's a beginner technique, do keep in mind that it's a beginner technique that's being done by someone who has a lot of experience. I mean, like obviously if you're a beginner and you're trying this technique out for your first time, it's not gonna look that good. There's just no way. That's the, just the kind of experience. I mean, like to get a model kit looking that good, this also has to do with just, uh, you know, professional lighting and everything like, else like that. So I mean, like it's the unfortunate thing about these books that can be a little bit misleading for beginners. Like if somebody's really beginner, they're gonna try out this technique. They're not gonna come out with anything looking anywhere near like that. They're gonna feel like, oh, like, I guess I'm just shit at modeling. I can't make that even though this is a beginner book. So just something to keep in mind. But uh, here looks like this is some other diff different kind of like uh, non-modeling products which you can use for modeling. So like here this uh, dish drying um, container here, for example, a uh, sonic cleaner there for like cleaning your tools, just, you know, general masking tape. You don't have to use like hobby branded masking tape. We got stuff over here, just like uh, chopsticks, toothpicks, skewers. Uh, sponge, just different kind of like uh, tape gauze there for protecting your fingers while you're working, stuff like that. It's just a toothbrush. So yeah, there's a lot of different uh, tools that we can use in this hobby that are not, you know, they're not hobby tools. You just kind of get them in your normal life. So this is like a kind of interesting section about sort of like a group working space. I'm not sure like, where this is. Oh, this, so these are some different uh, kind of clubs, I guess, where you can go, I guess, where they maybe have like rented space. And so there's like all the contact information about like the hours when they're open, telephone number and everything else. So if you're in Japan and you want to uh, join any of these clubs or visit any of these kind of clubs, looks like there's a few that you can join. So that's kind of cool that those are featured in here. So after, making a plastic model. So this is going to be, I think, probably getting into, yeah, just kind of like photography. So again, really cool photography just here on this page. On the next page here, a little bit more just kind of about, okay, so you finished your model, now how are you gonna present it to the world so you can make a base? This is again, just using these kind of uh, wood cup container bases that I personally love to use. I use them all the time uh, for my bases. You can usually get these just like at any like kind of dollar store or you can usually find them like, like bargain bins at Target or something like that. So. You can use that, you can use just pieces of like little rocks and stones, chip, uh, wood chips, cork. You just glue some cork on there and just kind of damage it up a little bit and you can make some pretty convincing looking 
ground there. Just get one of these wood block kind of bases, throw some wood stain on there, and you've got a very nice looking wood base to display your model kit. And then here's another advertisement for the Bishojo Plastic Modeling Magazine for Beginners. We did take a look at that book, I know, in the past, where we've seen just kind of more about those particular models. Another kind of aspect here, talking about like your display case. So here we got an advertisement for Jajan, different, uh, I guess it's a brand of display cases that are made in Japan, probably difficult to get outside of Japan, that particular brand anyway. And then it's just different kind of uh, carrying cases and stuff, having different shelving and storage units like for your paints, for your tools, for your kits, like when you're working on kits, you need some sort of like containers for them. So there's all sorts of different boxes and things that you can find. Uh, like hobby branded ones and then non hobby branded ones, of course. And then, of course, here obviously your photography. So, got cell phone photography and like actual like DSLR photography. Some examples of these. And this, so, this is just a little bit kind of about uh, different ways you can go about your photography for your kits as well. And posing, of course. So, posing very important. So, you got to have a good kit, you got to have a good uh, kind of setup, not necessarily. I mean, you, you can certainly take good photos just as long as you have a half decent uh, camera on your phone and just sort out some decent lighting for it. But then of course the pose is also important. And actually this is not about the pose. This is about just uh, lighting. So this is cell phone photo, cell phone photo with lighting, DSLR photo, DSLR photo with lighting. So just with a basic ring light there. Uh, for that, although I even though I was thinking at first that that was about pose, I'm sure we'll see maybe something about the pose in here as well. Maybe not. I don't know. Or either that or maybe I skipped over it. But it's also a bit in here just kind of about like your camera angle, for example, taking a, a photo just kind of like from a lower angle, obviously is going to make the model look larger. Uh, for a car photo, taking it from above is going to make it look just kind of more like a toy or whatever. And then taking photos outside here, of course, is going to be one of the best things that you can do. Uh, just kind of depending on the model kit and how you want to present it, of course, but you can get some really awesome photography here outside. These are a couple of really, really, really good examples of that. And then other different settings and examples of just some stuff here. I'm actually not too sure, but we got some other Hobby Japan publications there in the background for further examples, how to build uh, original models. This is a kind of interesting section here. These are models that are just made out of just scrap parts. So like, and not even scrap parts of other plastic models, scraps of just like random stuff. So like these like clothesline clips and these just different like random bits and bobs of anything that's like plastic or metal. Uh, this modeler has just kind of made these original design robots just out of kind of trash essentially, which is very cool. So you got a little, little bit about that and some more just kind of general, like kind of here are some things to look for, which can be really useful, basically anything made out of plastic, but uh, otherwise just some kind of useful tools, nippers, a soldering iron can be helpful. Obviously glue, something you're gonna need uh, for this, but it's kind of an example of how you can just build your own model kit out of virtually anything. So that looks really cool. Here's the advertisement for the Gunpla Super Technique book there as well. And I think we're getting to the end here. So there's some more about these original creations of plastic models. It's really cool. They've given quite a good amount of attention to that. And then let's see a little short bit here, kind of about uh, diorama making there with trees or whatever, I guess. Uh, HGEX, Hobby Japan Extra. I think that's maybe an advertisement for a, an upcoming issue. I would imagine, maybe, I'm not sure. Anyway, there's more examples of some more kits here from Bandai and otherwise, and these are art plot kits there, the laid back camp ones and cinema books. So this is just kind of some other different kind of recommended stuff, I guess, extra column, maybe just like from the editors. So like editors picks of some uh, recommended books, movies, uh, next issue. We've got an advertisement here also for the Hobby Japan how to paint, uh, we saw this book as well. I've reviewed that one also, uh, how to paint these 120 scale plastic model kits there. And that focused quite a bit on the minimum factory line in particular. So uh, we did take a look at that and that is going to conclude this issue. So yeah, there was a lot of really great stuff in there. It certainly is very, very uh, much orientated for someone who is brand, brand new to plastic modeling. So I mean, it's all in Japanese, so if you wanted to get this for someone you know, who's not a Japanese speaker, obviously they're gonna have to do a lot of translating and probably 
this is a lot of information that, you know, if you wanted to convey the information to your friend, you could probably just tell them. It would be a lot easier than giving them this. But I mean, it's certainly an interesting book. A lot of really great photography in there, which is just, it's just like a very nicely uh, presented book. So really, really nice one there from Hobby Japan uh, for this issue of Extra. Let me know your guys' thoughts down in the comment section below. Is there anything that you thought did, even though it's like, I'm sure most of you are not that beginner, but was there anything that you found particularly interesting that was cool to see in this book? Let me know now in the comment section below. Thank you guys, as always, for all of your support. Check out all the different model kits and everything, tools and supplies and all the different cool stuff that you saw in here. You can check out at the link in the video description below to USA Gundam Store, not this. Uh, magazine itself, but all the cool stuff that was in there you can check out at USA Gundam store. So the link is down in the video description. Thank you guys all so much for liking the video, commenting, subscribing. It really helps out a lot. Till next time, hope you guys all have a great day. See you later. Bye bye.